Hello there. During their 40-year exodus, the Israelites were frequently involved in skirmishes with marauding tribes. When Joshua became their military commander, they won their first decisive battle, this time against the Amalekites at Rephidim. All the time, God was preparing Joshua for a much bigger conflict, the invasion of the promised land of Canaan. Joshua chapter 3 explains how God assisted the Israelites, who were now under the leadership of Joshua, to walk across the bed of the river Jordan and enter Canaan. Think about the absolute faith and the trust Joshua and the Israelites had in God. The river Jordan was in full flow at the time. When Joshua told the priest carrying the ark to walk into the Jordan, instead of saying, hey, wait a wee minute, Joshua, let's think about this. The priest instantly obeyed and the water immediately receded. The Israelites knew that with God on their side, anything can be achieved. Someone once said, if God tells me to jump through a stone wall, it would be my duty to jump and it would be God's duty to remove the wall. Joshua chapter 4 verses 4 to 9 tells us God told Joshua to have a representative from all of the 12 tribes of Israel lift a rock from the bed of the Jordan. The rocks were to be placed where the priests had stood with the ark. Twelve stones from the Jordan were later erected as a memorial monument in Gilgal, the Israelites' base camp in Canaan. Verse 7 says, These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Both monuments were to be a visual reminder of what happened at that place and of God's power and how he had helped them. Gilgal does not refer to a specific place, but was a generic term for a fortified camp. Archaeologists have discovered the remains of what appears to be such a camp. It's a large oval walled area constructed from stone and contains artefacts dating back to the early Iron Age at a place called Unuk, six miles from the River Jordan. This is at the right place and from the right time period. Just as the 12 stones were to be a reminder for the Israelites, we all have items that trigger our own memories of things that have happened in our past. My wife and I don't have any piles of stones in the house, but probably like you, we've got other things, for example, ornaments, photographs, books, letters and so on. Every item has a story behind it. Perhaps it were a gift from a friend or belonged to a loved one. Perhaps it is something we found lying in the street. They might have no commercial value, but they are precious because of an association with an event in our past. It's something that you can look at and the memories come flooding back. Having a memory is a gift from God, but it doesn't mean that we should dwell in the past. We must always live for today. It says in Psalm 118 verse 24, The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. But we must never regard people and events in the past as having no value because they shape the future. If we don't remember, if we don't look back, we strip away and forget the lessons from previous mistakes. And if we fail to remember the lessons of the past, we risk repeating the mistakes. The Bible isn't just a storybook. The Bible contains numerous accounts of other people's experiences and the mistakes they made. That's why it's so important to read the Bible so we can learn lessons from past mistakes. Sometimes 
our memories might not be so pleasant. They might be tinged with regret. Perhaps you've fallen out with someone, possibly over a trivial matter, and pride has prevented reconciliation. The problem is that if we do not learn to forgive past hurt, life can become intolerable because the painful memories will cast a shadow in your mind and will continue to haunt you. There's a saying from Peru, I can forgive but I will never forget. Sadly, some people can't even forgive. Someone once said that God is the greatest forgiver and God's forgiveness is complete and total. As Christians, we must always try to be like God and reach out our hands to those we have hurt or who have hurt us and forgive them. Human nature might make it difficult to forget what has happened, but forgiveness of the person is within all of our grasps. Have you learned lessons from past mistakes or do you just carry on trampling your way through life regardless of the consequences? If so, it's never too late to change. We will all make mistakes, but we must learn from them. If you've done something wrong, correct it and make it right. Try and live in the truth with faith in God. And if you do make mistakes, tell God. He will forgive you, see you through, help put things right and place you back on a firm footing. We must forgive the people who caused us hurt in the past just as we know that God will forgive the pain we've caused to others. All we have to do is accept that we have sinned and that Jesus died for us. Jesus died for you and for me. No exceptions. Every single one of us to free us and to save us. When you pass a church or see a Bible or see the cross, in fact at all times, Please let the memory that he died for us always, every single minute of every single day, be with you. Thank you, friends, for listening to me again today. Thank you.